Okay, so here's my two favorite Lunar Lake devices right now, the HP Omnibook Flip 14. And I have been using this in lieu of uh, the Surface Pro 11 until Microsoft launched this, kind of dramatically uh, in my estimation, <laughs> because I did not expect that we'd get a Lunar Lake Surface Pro 11. And suddenly out of the blue, they said, nope, we're going to release three different Surface Pros in the space of 10 months. And we got it. We got this Intel Lunar Lake version, which I'm very happy with. I was using the HP Omnibook, which uh, I do like quite a bit. You can see it has this atmospheric blue color that's quite, quite nice. Um, but let's compare these two devices a little bit. This is the HP Omnibook flip 14 on the left 32 gigabytes ultra 7 258v on the right the surface pro 11 intel version with the ultra 7 268v those are basically the same chip just uh, this one boosts a tiny bit higher um, and what i'm going to be doing is loading each of these up with a cpu burner test to see how many watts it can pull because a lot of people you know, they say the Surface Pro 11 must throttle hard, right? Yeah, there's no way that it that it can keep up. But I just wanted to see how it compared to a more conventional laptop. And so what I have here on the left-hand side here is a power meter. And C1 is the Omnibook. And C2 is the Surface Pro 11 Intel. And they're both idling right now. And you can see that they're both using about 10 watts. They both are configured a little bit differently in their power settings. The HP is controlled by the MyHP app. I do have it in the performance mode, uh, which should you know, set it to the maximum amount of power that we can push on this device. On the Surface Pro, it's a little more integrated. You click on the battery, you click on 100%, and you set it to best performance, and that gets you uh, the best power mode to push the most amount of power through the chip. So I'm going to run this CPU burner test and the metric to look at is uh, both the package power that's going to be highlighted here in blue. You can see right, right here the HP keeps itself clocked a little bit higher uh, when it's in that performance mode by HP. I don't know why they do that, um, but you can see that the net effect is this keeps it at a higher clock speed, it's using about 10 watts, where the Surface Pro, now that it's settled down, is about 6 watts. So a lot better. I I predicted this, but I the Surface Pro 11 should have a lot better idle battery life. You know, if you're using 50% more power over here just to idle, you're going to have a bad time when it comes to battery life on the Omnibook. I mean, it's still pretty good. They're, they're not using a whole lot of power right here, but uh, the Surface Pro is quite efficient in, in the way that it operates. But anyways, uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start the throttling test at the same time so we can see its behavior. Go ahead and click Start on both of these. And you can see uh, they're both they're both set to peak at 37 watt power. If you look at the PL2 power limit, and they are this is using 37 watts, and the Surface Pro 11 is using 37 watts. You can see the Omnic Book has completely overheated itself. It went into the red on its package power at 97. The Surface Pro 11 actually cools a little bit better. Um, the other thing I've noticed on this HP, you can see it's like not up refreshing its screen anymore. I've noticed some really strange things with Lunar Lake on this Omnibook. I've not noticed the same strangeness on the Surface Pro 11. But anyways, we're, we now see that they both have throttled back to the Omnibook is at 28 watt limit and the Surface Pro 11 is at a 30 watt limit. So you've got two extra watts that you're working with and you can see in the power meter this says it's using less watts but that's just because of the the circuitry is a little bit more efficient and the screen's smaller um, but if you look at package power this is using 30 watts and this is using 28 
So the Surface Pro 11 is actually pushing more power, more performance than this notebook. And it's a little bit cooler. You can see this is at 81 degrees Celsius despite pushing 30 watts, and this is at 87 degrees and it's pushing 28. So the cooling efficiency is actually better on the Surface Pro 11 than the HP Omnibook Flip 14. And we're just going to let them, um, you know, run their CPU burn tests and see what they do. And over here we've got, we're working with 30 watts and here we're working with 28 watts. That's its limit right now. You do see the package power jump around a lot, but it's targeting 28 watts here and 30 watts here. So we're actually getting better performance on the Surface Pro 11 side. And again, we have this weird bug that I've, I don't know what it is. I don't know <laughs> if it's drivers, but I have to click on this task manager screen for it to actually start updating, which is so weird. But I have noticed a lot of weird things with Lunar Lake on this HP laptop. So one thing too, if we look at the maximum power that it pushed through the chip, this peaked at 38 watts, and over here it, it peaked at 39.8. But that was just for a split second while it was <laughs> readjusting to its target. But what we're seeing is 30 watts of performance on the Surface Pro 11 side using only 80 and a lower temperature. This is 28 watt target, well now it's 27 and it's at 86 degrees. So using less power and hotter on the Omnibook side versus the Surface Pro 11. So that's why, that's why I'm really impressed with the Surface Pro 11 this year um, in Lunar Lake. It just, ooh, it just is a really fun device to use. It's snappy and even, even the Omnibook, I, they gotta fix the drivers. I don't know what's going on with it. But you'll be scrolling on the screen and you'll see little hitches or like you'll go to like make your YouTube video go full screen and it'll just like hitch for like a couple seconds and then it will start working. Just weird stuff like this. Screen's not updating unless you click on it and then it updates. I don't know what that is, but HP needs to work on that because they're basically the same chip. It's just the implementation of it. Okay, and where are we at in terms of watts? This is targeting 27.8, and the Surface Pro 11 is targeting 30 watts. We're almost five minutes into this test. And what, you'll, what I'm showing you is that both of these devices are giving you very consistent performance. Um, they're really not throttling much at all. I mean, they peak at 37 and immediately artificially limit themselves to 30, well, 28 and 30. Um, and now the Surface Pro 11 has gone down to 25 watt mode. It is now targeting 25 and this one's at 27.8. So ultimately the Omnibook is giving you a little bit better performance but again, this is artificial because uh, if you look at the actual package temperature, the Surface Pro 11's at 77 degrees Celsius, where the Omnibook is like at 86. Um, so what's actually happening is the Surface Pro 11 is cutting the power back a little because it's getting hot on the back and it has a skin temperature sensor. And again, you can override that using one of my Surface fans. We throw that on the back, we get back up to 30 watt performance. Uh, the Omnibook is going to sit here at about 27 watts and it will continue to push about 27 watts. So ultimately 25.5 watts versus 27 watts without anything. Now put a fan on the back of this, you'll get back up to 30 watts of performance on the Surface Pro 11. But yeah, there's really not any 
substantial difference in uh, the way that these throttle necessarily. So, and yeah. So let's, let's, I've let this run for upwards of half an hour and it's, you're going to see the same thing. This one, uh, bottoms out at a, at a 27 ish. I've seen it hit 25 occasionally. If you let it run long enough, the surface pro 11 is going to stay at 25 no matter what. So they both are in the end. If you let them run long enough, I mean, we're, we're, I'm, parting hairs at this at this point because um they they act very equivalent and the point of me saying that is this is a tablet device and it's not throttling much more than the laptop device and its temperature is much lower and even though it is throttling slightly, just slightly, and just the fact I'm talking about throttling makes me sound like I'm trying to compensate for something, but the reality of it is, is these these two machines are are very very similar, despite the Surface Pro 11 being a, a much smaller package. But let's compare these two devices uh, from something more than just the throttling perspective. Um. Both of these have OLED 120 hertz screens. The Omnibook has a 14 inch uh, screen. It is touch and it does support a pen. And in fact, this is the best pen implementation uh, that I have ever seen besides a Surface device. I really like this pen. The magnet is very strong. That thing does not come off at all. And so that pen is always ready to go. It reminds me of the original surfaces before they had the the special pocket here. Um, the Surface Pro 11 has a, also has an OLED 120 hertz screen, which looks, they both look incredible. These are great screens on these devices. It is a fingerprint magnet, as you can see, both of these, but this does have a anti-reflective coating. The Surface Pro 11, in terms of connectivity, has two USB-C Thunderbolt ports and a Surface Connect port, and then also the ability to swap out your SSD. So not a whole lot of connectivity. They really want you to buy that Surface dock. Um, the HP has a wider range of connectivity. It has three USB-C Thunderbolt ports. Actually, are they all Thunderbolt? Sorry, this is a 20 gigabit per second USB-C port and these two connectors on the end are Thunderbolt. You then have the headphone jack right there. The HP is also a convertible, so it does flip all the way around and gives you a semi tablet experience, which is, it's all right. It's not the best. Um, it does have a 1610 aspect ratio, which is better than a, you know, 169 for something like this. Uh, but if you try to, it is still pretty weighty. Now I did have the Spectre, the previous version of this was the Spectre X360 14, and it is much slimmer. It's it's not it's not a whole lot lighter necessarily, but it's a little bit lighter, and it also is thinner. You can see this is a very thin device. In fact, if you compare it to the Surface, there actually about the same thickness with the type cover. <laughs> so props to HP for making it thin. However, you always can take your Surface device, which does weigh a little bit less, and pull the type cover off. Your type cover still works, by the way. You can still type, type on it. 
um, which is a really cool feature. So I really like, I really like the form factor of the Surface Pro though. It fits in your hand super well. You can use the kickstand and set it up however you want. And it just is a really cool device. And I do like the soft touch type cover because you can just slam it on there. It's ready to go. It's ready to carry the soft touch. You don't have to worry about because it's rugged and durable. So I do really like the Surface Pro 11. This is my daily carry at this point. The Omnibook, there's a couple things that I don't like about it. One of them is the performance that I get when I'm using it just browsing around is not very good. Uh, it has weird hitches. You saw that the task manager was not updating when I was using it. I really don't know what that is, but it's definitely a problem. You can really type pretty well with this. It's not bad at all. The, the touchpad is nice and large. However, it's a little bit clicky. And I guess what I mean by that, it, I mean from the time you start to put pressure on the pad from the time that it actually clicks, there's a slight just mechanical delay when you push that that makes it feel like a little uneven. So that's, that's the typing experience on the HP. When you contrast that to the Surface, The flex keyboard works pretty well. It's very tactile, it's very punchy, it's very flexy, and in a good way. And it's very stiff, so it actually you get you get more out of this keyboard than what you would expect for it being literally something you can rip off of the device but it is a very very nice keyboard i do prefer it over the hp and while the trackpad on this is quite a bit smaller when you do your push to click like this it's almost instantaneous feedback. The mouse on the screen follows your, your fingers so closely, so accurately, you can really just speed along in this. When I'm using the HP, I feel like I wanna pull out a mouse. I wanna get a mouse out and start using it when I'm using the HP. But when I'm using the Surface, unless I'm playing a game, then I would want a mouse. But if I'm just browsing around, your fingertip just glides on this thing so nicely, and then the click is so effortless, just no matter where you are, you just put that little extra push to do the click. Um, so I really like this glass trackpad on the Surface Pro 11. Uh, fit and finish, comfort and refinement, Surface Pro 11 is where it's at. So if you were considering between these two devices, I would definitely look into the Surface Pro 11 Intel.